the Varsity House knows that other than training, you know, we're really passionate about our cuisine. And, and since nutrition is such a huge part of the fitness world for athletes and our adult clientele, we want to show you how to make some really healthy food that tastes, that, that's not only really good for you, but tastes fantastic. Okay? So today we're going to prep a couple meals. We're going to take some of my mother's recipe, some, of, some, some Italian classics, a chicken cacciatore, a pasta bolognese, okay? and, a, and a chicken parmesan, okay? and, and give it a healthy twist and, and make it in a way that, that you can feel guilt free about it and still have an awesome flavor that people are going to love and die for. supply of organic vegetables and fruits. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, I can smell it. It smells fantastic. I love nothing better than the smell of fresh basil and tomatoes in the summertime. But there we go. Look at that nice big thing of fresh basil. It looks fantastic. Okay, we're going to use that in just about everything we make today. Okay, why not since we have it. Uh, we got some nice fresh thyme and we got a little bit of sage. So we'll make the best of some having some nice fresh vegetables to use. Uh, as well as some dried stuff that I use. You don't have to have, you don't have to have cream. You know, I use a lot of spice blends. This is Victoria's Spice. You can get some nice spice blends. I got a little bit of paprika out here today. I got a little fresh garlic salt. Uh, we got some hot pepper flakes, regular pepper. And, uh, and that's about it. A little poultry seasoning here. So lots of garlic. And, and, and you got some great, and some fresh vegetables and you can pretty much, you know, do anything, okay? I'm gonna, since I have them, I got some string beans. I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put some of these string beans in my bolognese too. And then you're gonna say, well, that's not a traditional bolognese. Well, you know, who's traditional? What, what is traditional? Food is whatever you like, whatever you have around. Okay? Doesn't, there's no real rules, right? Bolognese is a meat and tomato sauce, right? Some of them have olives, some of them have olive, like olives and capers and things like that. My mother used to make it with vegetables, right? And, uh, and that was a great, like I said, it was a great way to sneak in a lot of healthy nutrients. So we're just gonna put a few of these in there. I'm, gonna, I'm just trimming off the little stems. You don't wanna eat the stems. Don't cook them with the stems. Okay, you can chew it on the stem. Nobody likes that. Okay. Take your basil, take your herbs and roll them up into a little tight roll, right? And I'm gonna cut it. And it's so unrolled on it. Roll it. And I'm gonna make a nice little, this is called a chiffonade. And it makes these little, basically little strings, we call it. Get out there. Watch your fingers. And then you got a nice little shot of your little basil there. There's a little basil, a little sage, a little fresh thyme. We got our, uh, we got our string beans, we got onions, we got carrots, and we got uh, bell peppers. I'm actually gonna take some of the string beans, and I'm just gonna give them a real rough cut while they're sitting here, okay? Just so they're a little diced up. They cook a little, so you know you don't have whole string beans in your sauce. Right. I'm gonna heat up my pot. I got a nice, I got a nice cast iron, uh, 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 you know, cooking pot that we're gonna use to make our sauce. And uh, these work great because they keep the temperature really even. So if you're cooking on a, on a stainless steel or aluminum pot, they they heat and cool very quickly. So these are a little easier to regulate when you're cooking a sauce or a stew or a soup. So if you don't have one of these, you pick one of these up. You can get them. You, they tend to be very expensive, but you can find them at a reasonable price. And we got a little, got a little Clayton's organic beef. Okay, grass-fed organic beef. This is 85% lean. So you know, a great way to eat healthy. You know, because one of the things that you're doing when you eat healthy is you're cutting out. You know, you should be cutting out a lot of breads and a lot of the sweets and things like that, right? So, you know, if you're like me and you love to eat and you tend to be a big eater, you know, you can't just eat mountains and mountains of meat, even though I'd like to. But you gotta fill it up with something. So, I cook with a lot, I make a lot of vegetables. A lot of greens, <coughs> a lot of different vegetables. And, uh, and that's a great way to, you know, add a ton of nutrients, but also, you know, you get to eat more food. You can eat a bowl of vegetables this big, you know, it has the same amount of calories as, you know, one little Big Mac, so. Okay, there's our meat. Pot's going. Okay, a little more heat here. Let's get that going a little hot faster. And 
and uh, in the meantime, I'll get a couple cans of our tomatoes open. We have some organic whole peeled tomatoes. I'm gonna use, I got, I got some San Marzano Italian plum tomatoes. I think I have one can of these crushed, these are crushed tomatoes. So we're gonna use, I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use three cans of tomatoes. I got two pounds of beef. And I got one bell pepper, about two carrots, a handful of green beans, and a half an onion, and a bunch of herbs, and and about six or seven cloves of garlic. And that's pretty much going to be about it, other than a little bit of uh, a little bit of dried herbs and some salt and pepper. And let that cook down for about an hour, and you got yourself a great little bolognese that you can put on top of just about anything. It doesn't have to be pasta. We're going to make some pasta today, but it doesn't have to be pasta. Uh, you can put it over rice, and you can put it over vegetables, and you can put it over quinoa. We got some really nice tricolor quinoa here from Trader Joe's, organic quinoa, and, uh, and you can try and mix it up. Okay, so if you're trying to go gluten free, you can get a gluten free pasta, or you can, you can eat some uh, one of the other alternatives like brown rice or quinoa. Quinoa. Nice. We get a little olive oil in the pot. I pretty much use don't use anything but olive oil. Get our meat brown. One of the things I like to do is uh, season my meat while the meat's cooking. You know, you want to season as you go. I think a lot of one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make when they're cooking is they they wait till the very end. You have a little Tuscan blend here. It's just a kind of a mixture of some dried herbs that from Victoria Spice. It's a nice little blend that I like to use. It's kind of it makes things real easy for me. I don't have to worry about making my own. Okay. Fresh brown pepper. The big one is a mixture of peppers and Himalayan sea salt. We got it at home. Almost, it's almost empty, but it's really good. Okay. Now you see our meat starting to brown. We're getting that going nice. We'll let that cook down a little bit more. Okay, we got that cooking. Alright, we add, we add our garlic. That cook a little bit. We take some of our vegetables just to get a get everything a little browned up first, and get some cook on it before you you know put all the tomatoes. You put a little liquid in first, and then nothing kind of you know you don't get any of that little caramelization that you get on the meat. And you'll get brown the meat real good. We'll save our a minute. All right, so we're gonna just stir that in, let that cook another minute. You can smell some of that garlic and onion getting cooked in there with the oil and the meat, fat. All right, so we're just gonna let that cook a minute. And hey, that's all gonna cook down a lot, so most of this is gonna dissolve. It smells pretty darn good already. Right. Just use cans of tomatoes. I mean, just you know, add your own add your own flavor. Right. We got some tomatoes. These are our whole tomatoes. I'm just gonna put them in whole. They'll break up on their own. We have a can of crushed tomatoes that we have here. I'm gonna get a little bit of water to put in there, right? Because you know water is kind of a universal solvent. You say, well, you want water in that? No. It's all we cook together, right? And then we got we got some of Mama Riggio's sauce here that I had hidden away and frozen. And uh, that's top secret. Keep a top secret stash of homemade sauce in the freezer. I won't get in there. I know that I know mom's sauce has got a lot of flavor. If it if it'll get if I can get it at the back. And our basil. Right. Herbs. You can put a little bit more. Pepper. You gotta let it cook for a bit, but you know you'll have to re-season it and kind of test it out and see where you're at. Um, I like things a little spicy, so I tend to add a couple hot pepper flakes, nothing crazy though. And uh, that's about it. That's about it. Okay. I'm just gonna stir that together, okay. mix that all in. So you 
get all that going. Let that cook for about, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes or so like this. Get it up to a boil. And lower the heat down to low so it's simmering. Um, I like to cook mine covered so I don't lose any of the liquid for about a half hour to 45 minutes on a real low heat. And then partially covered for another half hour, 45 minutes or even longer uh, until it reaches the thickness you want. If it's too thick, you can add some water. Okay? If it's too thin, right, you just cook it a little bit longer. Our next dish that we're going to be making is a chicken cacciatore. Right? This is always one of my favorites, my mom's favorite, it's super easy to make. So a traditional chicken cacciatore is just like a, really like a chicken stew. And just has like garlic and peppers and onions in it. And you cook it down with some, you know, with a little bit of tomato sauce. A lot of times they'll fry the chicken and bread the chicken and then make the sauce. But we're going to do is a bake. We're going to bake it, obviously, and then try to make this a little healthier. And we're going to add some. We're going to have our we got our peppers. We got our garlic. Okay. Right? We're going to add a little zucchini to it. I like the, you know, I got them, so we're going to use them. So you know, like again, there's really no right or wrong to any of these dishes. You can kind of put whatever you like into anything. Okay. Right? Um, we got our fancy little mandolin here that we're gonna use, okay? This is about, I don't know, maybe cost me about $10. I got it at Whole Foods, a little porcelain mandolin. It works fantastic. Can't beat that, okay? Make perfect little zucchini slices. Put in our cacciatore. So. All right, so we got a whole cut up chicken here. Okay. Then I marinated overnight in a little, a little lemon, uh, a little bit of garlic, and a little bit of our Tuscan seasoning. You want a nice lemony flavor, I recommend you use some of the zest from the lemon, and not just the lemon juice. The zest has more flavor, and it stays on the meat and on the products a lot better. So you can get yourself a zester, right? This is an orange, I'm gonna zest some orange, right? And you see there, you got a nice, right, orange flavor zest. It's fantastic flavoring for fish, for your chicken, or anything that you cook. And it really sticks to the meat, so when you cook it, it almost gets this orange lemony crust on it. It's fantastic. I use a lot of lemon zest and orange zest in my food. So we're going to slice some lemons and put it, when we put this dish all together, we're going to slice some lemons and oranges on top, put it on top and bake it. It'll be great. It'll be a real nice flavor. All right, so. I'm gonna start building my cacciatore. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in my pan. Am I too far, am I too close to you, Tate? No, you're good. Okay. So, I'm gonna put a little olive oil in the pan. I just got, this is like my go-to crappy aluminum pan that I use. You don't have to have fancy all clad equipment, you know, you don't have to have a, a 16 burner wolf stove, you know. It, it, I've made some amazing food on some real low tech, cheap, kitchen equipment, so it's not about it's not about the gear you have, although it helps, okay? It's about the passion and the innovation and the love of food, okay? which I have plenty of, so. And when I'm not working out, Sunday is generally my only day off away from the gym. I spend a good portion of my day cooking and prepping our food for the week, and it's great for me and, you know, me and Adele some friends will have some friends over on Sunday and it's you know it's just it's a fun time for me I enjoy cooking cooking is uh, it's it's an outlet for me it's an hour or two where I'm focused on something else other than the gym other than the business you know other than the stress of life and it's like it's like painting except I'm painting with flavor instead of painting with with colors okay so I I made a nice little bed right with my for my chicken with my uh, um, peppers and my my sliced up zucchini, I'm gonna take some some of the onion that I have left over, and I'm just gonna add that. I'm just gonna leave it exactly like it is. I'm just gonna break it up a little bit, throw it in there. I don't like too much onion in my cacciatore. Some people like it, but we only need a little bit, give it a little, give it a little bit of that onion flavor. 
I got some huge cloves of garlic. I'm actually gonna cut, boy, I'm actually gonna cut them in half, right? And uh, I almost got a piece of finger in there too today. Because they're so big, I'm chopping them in half, almost like two cloves each. So I'm just gonna put those in there. We got our chicken. All right, you know, anytime you're handling raw chicken, make sure you really use a pair of towels. You wash your hands real good. And you try not to let the chicken touch anything else that you got cooking. If you do, you gotta wash it, you gotta clean it, because chicken contains bacteria. You wanna be careful. So I'm gonna put that on there, I got my breast, okay? I'm gonna kinda put that, mess them down a little bit, okay? I got my, my quarters, okay, my thighs here. Okay, my chicken thighs. I got my little wings, okay, my drumsticks. Look good. Okay, it's not cooked, you can't eat it yet. Okay. That's it, good. I'm gonna take my marinade, there's no sense of wasting it since we're cooking it all anyway. Okay, we'll put that right on there. So we're gonna take our tomatoes, okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the tomatoes in here. I'm just kind of sneaking them in around the sides of my chicken. Okay, I'm just gonna use some of that sauce as our liquid okay, to fill in there. Nice. We got some tomatoes. We got our chicken. We got our vegetables. I love orange. Last time, last I made this dish not too long ago. And I'm gonna put a little, take my orange slice, okay? I'm gonna slice them real thin. Alright, slice them real thin. Alright, I'm gonna just do it with my, with my hand. These are a type of orange called Cabo Cabo orange. We got some stuff still in here. I want to use because I got it. And it's left over, so no sense wasting it. Then we got some nice olives that I'm gonna throw in here. All right? Just gonna kind of lay them around. The olives and oranges going together are like a match made in heaven. If you haven't tried it, you're wasting your time. Get on. Okay. Well, I'm going to put a little fresh herbs. Let me get another little bunch of herbs together. Our basil. A nice big old sage leaf or two. And a little handful of thyme. Give it another shipping on. Okay. Sprinkle that on top. Okay. It's gonna bake. We're gonna cover this with tin. We're gonna cover this with aluminum foil. And bake in the oven. So okay. I'm gonna take my oranges. I'm gonna lay them on top. Why not? A little orange flavor in there. Okay. I'm gonna take my lemon and do the same thing. This is, this is a pink lemon. They're like a funky different variation of lemon. It tastes like a lemon, smells like a lemon. Almost got, it does have a little bit, I wanna say it's almost got like a tiny little bit of a grapefruit flavor to it though, or smell to it. Okay. We get some little, we'll get a little aluminum foil. We got our oven set to 450 degrees and we're gonna bake this in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour depending on your oven, depending on the temperature, right? I like cooking at a pretty hot temperature. You got a lot of vegetables in here. They take a while to get everything steaming and cooking down. You got a lot of volume of food here. You got a whole chicken, about a three pound chicken that we had cut off. So it's gonna take at least an hour probably to cook this, um, you know, but it's, again, you saw how easy it was to put it together. So this is another one of those, you know, meals that you could just put together, put it in the oven, and it's done. And it's done. Throw that in the oven. Right. Oh, the is definitely cooking away. Okay. Right, check out that bolognese, it's going really nice now. 
Okay, all our meat, all our vegetables are starting to cook down a little bit. Okay. It don't take much to make healthy food that tastes great. All right, you see I made this this dish here is gonna they got a lot of protein, got a lot of vegetables. It's gonna make food for, you know, I'll have I'll have bolognese sauce for oh, quite a few weeks. All right, I'll 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 probably eat this a couple times this week. Um, I'll freeze some of it up, I'll package it up and freeze it, and then you have bolognese sauce in the freezer. Every time you want to make a nice sauce, you have it. Okay? I made this and the cacciatore all in, all together, maybe about 30 minutes of prep. Okay, other than marinating the chicken, which I marinated last night, like I said, in a little garlic, lemon, and olive oil. And that was the only other thing I did that I didn't do here in front of you today. But other than that, everything took about a half an hour to put together and it'll take somewhere in the range of an hour to, or so, give or take the chick cacciatore should take about an hour to cook, and the bolognese you can cook for one to three hours depending on how low your temperature, how thick you like it, and so forth. I'm gonna set my timer for an hour, right? And uh, I'll check everything in a little bit, right? We'll check back, check all back. So our last dish for today is going to be a, a, a baked chicken parmesan. And this dish is fantastic. This is one of my favorites. It really tastes like chicken parmesan. It's awesome. You can use a lot of different types of cheese. Today we're using provolone cheese because I love provolone. It has sharp taste. You could use mozzarella. You could use Fontana cheese. You could use anything. But we're going to use a little bit of uh, 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 provolone cheese on top to give it a little flavor. We got some of mom's sauce. We're going to put that over. We have, we're going to make our whole wheat pasta. So you're going to have a really Italian classic dinner here that's got half the calories, right? And, and it's going to be uh, uh, and less, you know, none of the flour, right? So we're going to use. In order to make the breading, a traditional, a traditional uh, um, breading for a, a chicken parmesan is usually breadcrumbs and flour. Okay, and since we don't want to use those, and we're trying to make a gluten-free version here, we have a quinoa flour that you can get pretty much anywhere now, and garbanzo bean flour. It's got a great flavor to it. And it cooks up really great. These hold up really great. They stick to the food great, and, and make it really easy for you. So, it's about, I use a, I use a one to one a one to one ratio here. So, I don't know, I've got a little bit less than a cup of quinoa flour. Keep these in my freezer, right? And a little bit less than a cup of garbanzo bean flour. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. Okay, I'm, gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a little seasoning in there, right? I want everything to taste good. All right, so we get a little, little fresh cracked salt and pepper, right? You know, a lot of people use Italian breadcrumb on this, so it's kind of stay in line with that. I'm gonna put some of my Tuscan seasoning in there, right? Make that go, a little bit more. All right, so that's gonna cook right into your chicken. And there's no real need to season anything here. The only thing I'll do here is that when I take my chicken out, I might just put a little salt and pepper on it, right? But since the breadcrumbs have some seasoning, I right, got a little bit of my a little bit of paprika in there, right? And uh, my secret ingredient, don't tell anybody, but a little poultry seasoning, right? That's pretty much like sage and thyme and some other stuff, and dried herbs for poultry and salt, right? That's it, I'm just gonna take that, I'm just gonna, gonna mix that up a little bit, okay, we'll get a spoon, instead of trying to do it with my fingers. Mix that up. All right. And we basically made ourselves a breadless seasoned breadcrumb for our for our chicken parmesan. We'll get some oh. we'll shell for a good measure. A little shell in there. Okay. You gotta season everything, right? You want everything to have some flavor. So, yeah. It's a little salt and pepper in the egg wash too. Okay, so now we have, we got our egg wash, and we got our breading, and then we got our chicken, and it's gonna be like an assembly line here. We're gonna take our chicken, 
chicken's gonna go right from the egg wash to the breading, to the pan. We're gonna give it a really quick little saute just to fry it up on either side with a little bit of olive oil right, and a little canola oil spread. It's gonna help keep it from burning. And then it's gonna go on the pan and we're gonna bake it the rest of the way. So we're really limiting the amount of oil that we use here and the amount of fat that we're cooking. We're not dredging it in a ton of breading and, and frying it in the pan with an inch full of olive oil. Chicken breast going here. These are really thick. These are about an inch or so thick. Too thick, right? But we're gonna pound them out a little bit, right? And just pound them down, right? Don't hit them hard, because you'll, you'll break them all to pieces. So we just wanna break up some of the connective tissue and you can see how they flat out. You shouldn't have chicken splattered all over your kitchen, right? If, if you go too hard, it's gonna be everywhere. Otherwise, you could just put a piece of cellophane paper on top of it, cellophane uh, uh, plastic on top of it. Right, you see, that's it, that's it. Just mash it up a little bit. Right, this is a big one, so I'm gonna give this one a little bit more. Right, just kind of pound it out. Right, and the reason why I'm pounding my chicken is because it tenderizes it, breaks up a lot of that connective tissue, right? And makes it an even thickness. So I only have one piece of chicken that's an inch and a half thick, and another piece of chicken that's a half inch thick, right? And then when I cook in the oven, I got, when I bake it, I got one piece of chicken that's totally overcooked, and I got another piece of chicken that's undercooked. Right? So we're gonna make our chicken parmesan. I'm gonna put about three tablespoons of olive oil in our pan. Okay. I'm also gonna give it a spritz of our canola oil spray just to make sure I get the pan nice and coated. Okay. Give that a little make sure so. You want to see how I get the whole coat and coat it. All right, this is going to be a quick process. Watch how this goes. You go right from the right from the chicken bowl to the egg wash, okay? To the breading, right? Get a nice coat of breading on there. Right? One, two. Right? Remember, this is a gluten-free, flourless, breadless breading. Right? Shake off all the extra. Right in the olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna fry that up a little bit. We'll probably get two pieces going at a time. Just a piece, 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 piece. Okay. Right in the egg. Back to the breading. Okay. Give it a couple turns. Make sure you got a nice little coating on there. Shake off the extra. Lay it in the olive oil, make sure you don't splatter it in the olive oil. We'll let that cook on each side for about 90 seconds. And then, uh, then we'll transfer it to our baking dish. Ow. Ow, we cook, we roll. Words of Guy Fieri, and that is money right there. That's going to be fantastic, right? Okay, this is a big piece of chicken, just a nice pellet out of the chicken breast. I'm going to bake this for about 10 minutes. I have the chicken for about 10, 10 to 15 minutes at 450, same temperature the cacciatore is cooking, just till it cooks through a little bit more. And then I'm going to put my cheese on it and stuff like that, because if you put the cheese on it too well, it's just going to all burn. The cheese has got a lot of fat in it, right? so you, want, you don't want that to burn. And we'll put that in the oven. We're all set. We're just about done. We're peeking in our catch toy here. Should be just about done. It's rocking and rolling. It's hot. Oh. All right, so I'm going to take each piece. Get a little basil, a little piece of sage on there. Okay. Nice and really nice. It smells fantastic. There we go. We're gonna take our cheese. I'm gonna fold it in half like that, like a moon. Just gonna put it right there. All right, so you have a nice little one little piece of cheese for each piece of chicken. I'm going to try to cover up your greens. 
just like that. That piece. My mom was making this piece. She put two pieces. Okay, we got our cheese covered, right? We'll put it back in the oven. We're still, we've been at 450 the whole time, so it's gonna cook quick. I'm gonna set my timer for about 10 minutes. And that's gonna be a wrap on that chicken parmesan. I'm gonna set that aside. Right, we got a little tri-colored organic quinoa and some greens to go with our chicken parm. Now, you know, you can make some pasta, you can make some other things to go with this, but you know, we're trying to make this as healthy as possible. So, quinoa is a great alternative carbohydrate. It's got a ton of protein, it's gluten free. It's actually a seed, okay, from South America. It's thousands of years old. They've been eating it down there forever. And it's, you know, got, it's very popular now here in the US. But it's been around for a long, long time. The Incans and the Mayans used to eat quinoa all the time. You can eat quinoa, one cup of quinoa, two cups of water. Nice piece of garlic. Real quick. Get a little olive oil in the pan. Good. Put my garlic right in. I don't want to burn my garlic, so I put it in early. I just try and infuse that olive oil with some of the flavor. I need hot pepper. Quite a bit in there. It's gonna be good. Right. Season up my make like a seasoned garlic oil out of this. And I don't want to use it all. all right, don't waste it. Get our chopped greens, our char. You see our olive oil is cooked a little bit. All right, you just want to let that simmer in that olive oil touch. We got one of our lemons here. As soon as I start, as soon as the second I start to see that, the second I start to see that garlic start to turn a touch brown, I'm gonna add my greens. Saute. All right. Like this. Got lemon. Got the pit. That's why I like these pink. Lemons, they don't have too many pits in them. Stir. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. So we got our quinoa here. That's all done. We just, we just been doing it. So, I already cook it in the microwave for about six minutes. Um, quinoa really doesn't take much time to cook. You just let it steam, let it cover, start it in. We're going to take some of our quinoa, put it on the plate. Just like that. Okay. We, got our, we got our garlic greens. Some of those. Alright, 
there. We'll take a piece of our chicken parm. Here. Right. And a little bit of our bolognese. Okay, let's test it, see how we got this going. Ooh, a little bit of our bolognese sauce here. Cooking. Test that out. Give that a quick little, quick little taste. Nice and meaty. Okay. Take a little bit of your bolognese. Put it on top, just like that. A little bit on the quinoa, you can do that. And there you go. You got a kicked up healthy Italian classic chicken parmesan a la Joe, a la Varsity Grill, with quinoa and sauteed garlic greens, rainbow chard. This is a great alternative, some good, but you could use spinach. Now you could use brown rice, you could use Fontana cheese or another type of cheese, or if you just want to go no cheese at all, you could do that as well. It still tastes fantastic. And this is a great way to make something that, you know, you grew up with as a kid into something a little bit healthier. Get rid of the pasta and get rid of some of it. Okay? Hope you like it.